Welcome once again to the message of the Bible GPS. Today we continue our focus on the book of Ruth. We're going to focus on chapter 3 and in chapter 1 we realize that we can beat bitterness. Chapter 2's message was about that God will provide and in chapter 3 we're going to experience something and learn something that we all need, especially in a time when we feel stuck. Now listening to so many people the previous week, I just realized there are so many people wrestling with heavy, heavy stuff in their lives. I read a newspaper article and I also saw an article on Facebook of a family that I got to know very well in a previous congregation. Their son at the age of 14 committed suicide a few days ago. Then you just realize, you know, how heavy that must be for the family and for the friends. And then you also realize how hard life is, especially for our young people today. It happens too fast for them. It is so much competition and so much pressure. So, so many people are dealing with so much on so many levels. It can be finances, relationships, your emotions. For so many people, life is in a crisis. Now, what do you do when you feel that your life is in a crisis? Now, this is where chapter 3 can help us. I believe so. Now, in chapter 3, you read about two women, Naomi and Ruth, and they were in a crisis because Naomi's husband died as well as her two sons, and there were no grandchildren. So it was her and her one grand, oh, not granddaughter, but her daughter-in-law, Ruth, who lived with her. And they realized they need someone to look after them because in those days the woman didn't work. They needed to have a male person to look after them. And this is why we read in verse 1 the following of chapter 3. One day Ruth's mother-in-law Naomi said to her, My daughter, I must find a home for you where you will be provided for. So she's actually saying, Ruth, you need to have a husband. Because you young, you can get married. And when we have someone that is a male person, especially a husband for you, then we know we have a future. Then someone will take care of us. And then she said, I want you to go to Boaz tonight because he is a relative of mine. And you've met him before, Ruth. He's wealthy and he's not married. And then she said in chapter 3, verse 3, she said, Go and wash yourself, put perfume on, and dress up so beautiful and go to him and go and lay by his feet after he he had work and after his meal. And she said, okay, I will do that. But that was a risk. So what is the way out when you have a crisis? Is to take calculated risk. And this was a calculated risk. Ruth was not ruthless. Why was she not ruthless? Because she knew Boaz, and in the previous chapter we realized he was friendly towards her. He said that she can always come back to his land to pick up the barley, always welcome, and that he will protect her, that no one will touch her. So it was calculated, and he was also a relative of Naomi. So it was a, a calculated risk. And then in verse 5 it says the following, and it says, I will do whatever you say. That is Ruth. So she told her mother-in-law, I will do that. So she was willing to take that risk. But she could have come up with excuses. She could have said, you know, grand, uh, mother-in-law, I am a Moabite. I'm a foreigner. And what if he chased me away? Because the Israelites don't always like our people. And she could have said, I'm shy. You know, this is the first time I'm doing this. I don't know what the outcome will be. So she could have come up with so many excuses to justify not to do what her mother-in-law requested her to do. And when you read in the Bible, God called many people to take risks, but they, many of them came up with excuses. Take Moses. God called Moses to take them out of, the, uh, out of Egypt. And in Exodus chapter 3, verse 11, he said, but, but God, who am I? I'm inadequate. And chapter 3, verse 13 of Exodus, he said, but I don't know enough. In chapter 4, verse 1, he says, but what if they don't take me seriously? And in verse 10 of chapter 4, he said, but um, I don't speak well. I've got a speech impediment. And in verse 13, he said, please, God, ask someone else. 
So he came up with a lot of excuses not to take the risk. And we also read in the book of Judges of Gideon, in chapter 5 verse 16, he said, um, don't use me because my clan is the weakest and I'm the least in my family. And then there is Jeremiah the prophet. He said in chapter 1 verse 7 of Jeremiah, but I am too young. You see, it's so easy to find an excuse not to, to take action and take a risk. But when we find excuses and not to take the risk, we're actually saying that I don't trust God. I really don't trust God. And we also need to realize when we take risk to become unstuck, many times God will provide an opportunity. But the opportunity that comes our way, it is not wrapped as a gift. You need to take a risk. So opportunities don't come to us gift wrapped. You need to take the risk. But if you take the risk, remember, if you win, you will be happy. If you lose, you will be wise. Because you actually cannot make a mistake when you take a calculated risk. An irresponsible risk will be where you get some money, like pension money, you work hard for it. And you give it to someone to invest, but you don't know that person. And then that person walked away with your money. Or you use the money to buy a business, but you know nothing about the business. That is not a responsible risk. But when you take a calculated risk, the outcome is either you're happy or you become wise. Now, she took this risk, Ruth. And then in verse 10 of chapter 3, Boaz realized that this woman beside him is Ruth, and he said, God bless you. And he said also, I'm so happy that you didn't go after the younger men. I will take care of you. It was such an amazing time for Ruth to realize that this risk actually paid off so well. In chapter 4, they got married and everything just went so well. Now the question is, if you are at a place where you realize you need to do something that is not easy. And the reason why we many times don't want to take the risk because we have fear. We fear failure. We fear what will the other person say? What if the other person will lose his or her temper? What if I will lose my job as a result when I go and talk to the manager? Or I don't want to talk to my family member about this difficult issue, you know, because he or she is, you know, short-tempered. There are so many reasons why you cannot take the risk to justify that you don't want to do it. But how can you come to a place where you say, you know what, no matter what, I'm going to do it. I think I just want to give you three things to realize. Number one, not taking the risk is a greater risk. Because if you don't take a risk, there's no opportunity of growth and there's no opportunity to become unstuck. And then you will regret it one day. Because they say the biggest regret of older people is when they look back in their lives, they realize, I should have taken more risk in life. Because when you get older, you realize the things that you feared, it was not necessary to fear those things. So people in the old age, they it is a painful experience, they say, when they realize they should have taken more chances and more risk in life. So it's a greater risk not to take a risk. Number two, always know that God is the way maker. When there's no way, God makes a way. There's Joseph in the pit. He was sold to the Midianites. They sold him to Pharaoh. And from Pharaoh's house, he ended up in prison. And from prison, because of his dreams, he ended up in Parliament. God has a way to make a way. We just need to trust God. Because when God brings you to something, God will take you through something. If God brings you to an opportunity to take the risk to become unstuck, God will help you to go through it because He is the way maker. So number one, it's a great risk not to take a risk. Number two, he's the way maker. Number three, every single time when I went to see my counselor, she had something on her wall and it read, let your faith be bigger than your fear. Because to experience this life in abundance, to work towards healing and reconciliation, to make progress in this life, you need to take risks. 
And then you realize, because you don't know what the outcome will be, even if it's a calculated risk, you never know. But trust God. Let your faith in God be bigger than your fear. Because your fear is actually telling you, I look at things that can go wrong. But your faith is telling you, I'm looking at what can go right. And many people are so skeptical. And I see that in so many Christians. They always think of what can go wrong. But if you have faith and trust in God and you've prayed about something and God brought you to an opportunity, you can realize that things will go right. We just need to trust God. So God wants us to make progress in life. And always think of that animal, a turtle. A turtle makes progress only when it sticks its neck out. Let's pray. God, we want to thank you for your amazing grace. Thank you, Lord, that we can take risk in life because you bring us to a place and you will take us through that as well. You are the way maker. Help us, Lord, to realize that our faith needs to be bigger than our fear. Thank you, Lord, that you are an amazing God. And thank you that you will give us what we need to go through a risk and an opportunity. We pray this in your beautiful name. Amen. So wherever you are, God has placed you. And God has a purpose for you being there. And maybe there's something that you need to do that is a risk. And realize that wherever God is sending you, maybe to talk to someone or to deal with something, always realize that He is the way maker. Realize that God brings you to something. He will take you through something. And always remember, let your faith be bigger than your fear. Let us make progress in our life. Let us stick our neck out there. God bless you.